Hello viewers who are gathering now taking you through the story of A Level Pure Mathematics. And this video I'm going to go through the topic of curve sketching for rational functions. So this video is suitable for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So so far this is the progress on this platform. Where you see the ticks are the videos which are available on this platform. Now, Math Paper 1 or Pure Mathematics is divided into five parts. One is Algebra, where two questions come in section A, and two in section B, and these are the topics under Algebra. Then, next is Trigonometry, where one question comes in section A, and one in section B, and these are the topics. The third part is Geometry, where one question comes in section A, and one in section B, and these are the topics. The fourth one is vectors, where one question comes in section A and one in section B, and these are the topics. And the last one is calculus, where three come in section A and three in section B. So, in, on this video, we are going to go through the topic of curve sketching for rational functions. Now, we had skipped it because this topic requires knowledge on this topic of inequalities, which is in algebra but now the good thing is that this topic of inequalities is already available on this platform so if you have not yet watched it i encourage you to first watch this video of inequalities before you go to curve sketching for rational functions So now previously, under the application of differentiation 1, we covered curve sketching, but that curve sketching was only for polynomial functions. For example, they could be quadratic, quadratic expressions or cubic expressions, but now we are going to deal with ratios or quotients. Quotients are the functions which are in this form, whereby the numerator is a function of x and also the denominator is a function of x. And they have no common factor and this gx is not equal to zero because any number divided by zero is infinity or is invalid now before we go to this curve sketching there are some terms we need to know some of them we covered them under curve sketching one but we shall still go through them so one is turning points so turning points i think remember that for you to get the turning points you have to remember that the first derivative is equal to zero now turning points can be a maximum point or a minimum point or a point of inflection. Then next is intercepts can be x or y intercept. Now this one you also know it because x intercept are the values of x when y is equal to zero and y intercepts are the values of y when x is equal to zero. Then you also have critical values. Now these critical values are, the term is not familiar, but if you cover the video of inequalities, this term is familiar. So for you to get these values, so these are values of the vertical asymptotes and the x asympt and the x intercepts. Now the what is an asymptote? So an asymptote is a line which becomes a tangent to a curve as x or y tends to infinity, i.e. the curve only gets nearer and nearer to the, to the line without touching it. So this word should be a line without touching it. So it is a line whereby the curve never touches unless under special conditions as we shall see. And when it crosses that asymptote sorry it doesn't it never crosses the vertical asymptote it crosses the horizontal asymptote so when the curve crosses this asymptote this asymptote will be referred to as a weak asymptote so there are various forms of rational functions but let's start with the rational functions where which have a factorizable denominator and a horizontal asymptote Therefore, if a curve is in the form this, so rational functions must be in quotient form. And gx can be factorized also. This denominator can be factorized. The following steps can be taken. So there are some steps we need to take for you to easily sketch such curves. So step one, you are going to determine the asymptotes. Now by the word asymptote, I mean vertical and horizontal asymptote. 
Now vertical asymptotes these are lines parallel to the y in axis for which y is undefined in other words y tends to positive or negative infinity they are obtained by equating the denominator of the, on the right hand side to zero remember i think you remember in all level for a function to be undefined the denominator will be equated to zero so in the same case you have to equate this denominator to zero and the values of x they will be the vertical asymptotes what about horizontal horizontal we shall see them in the next slide so let's go to step two step two after determining the symptoms you will also determine the turning points and their nature nature means that they max is it a maximum minimum or a point of inflection then step three is to determine the asymptotes and step four list down the critical values critical values think you by now you know what they are step five determine the region where the curve lies so this one it will be new in s5 you cover turning points and intercepts but this one you didn't cover it and also didn't cover critical values and you also didn't cover the region where the curve lies so the last step is to sketch the curve now these three steps are the ones which are a little new and we shall see how they are done so what we need to note is that the vertical symptoms can never intercept or can never be cut by a curve. Okay, now let's look at these horizontal asymptotes before we go to the questions. So these are par these are lines parallel to the x-axis for which x is undefined. In other words, x tends to plus or minus infinity. Curves of rational functions can have many vertical asymptotes, but at most one horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote can only be one or none. And when there's no horizontal asymptote, it implies that there is also there will be a either a slanting asymptote or none. So you'll see what a slanting asymptote means as we go on in this video. So horizontal asymptotes are obtained depending on the highest degree of x in both the numerator and denominator so there are two conditions one is that if the highest degree of x in the numerator is less is less than that in the denominator it implies that y equal to zero is the horizontal asymptote for that curve so each time they ha you look at the highest degree in the numerator and that one in the denominator and you, reali re you realize that the one in the numerator is less than that in the denominator just know that the asymptote is y equal to zero as x tends to plus or minus infinity then if the highest degree of x in the numerator is the same is the same as that in the denominator it implies that the asymptote will be y equal to a over b now what is a and what is b so a is the coefficient of the highest degree in the numerator highest degree of x in the numerator and b is the coefficient of the highest degree of x in the denominator so when the co highest degrees are the same what you need to do is to look at their coefficients and divide the two the third case is when the highest degree in the numerator is greater than that in the denominator but that one will be seen under the part of standing asymptote because when that happens it implies that there is no horizontal asymptote instead there will be a slanting asymptote so like i said we shall look at a slanting asymptote later but in this video so there's something we need to note is that if a curve intercepts a horizontal asymptote then that asymptote will be referred to as a weak asymptote so previously we saw that the curve only gets nearer and nearer to the asymptote but never touches but remember i told you there is a special case whereby the curve can cut that horizontal asymptote and in that case that horizontal asymptote will be referred to as a weak asymptote 
So with that knowledge, let's go through these questions. Like I told you, our priority here on this platform is UNEB questions. So let's first look at UNEB questions and uh, rational functions of that form. So question one came from your UNEB 2007 paper one question 10 and says, sketch the curve this. I think we realize that the denominator is factorizable. Therefore, we can go through the steps we have listed above. The first step was to get the asymptotes. So to get the asymptotes, you have to ask yourself, as y tends to plus minus infinity, what is x? So as y tends to plus minus infinity, like we said, you get the denominator and equate it to 0. When you equate it to 0, you get values of x. Now these values of x are what we call the vertical asymptotes. So that basically that's how they get vertical asymptotes. What about horizontal asymptotes? For horizontal asymptotes, as x tends to plus or minus infinity, we say that look at the degree. So in the numerator, the degree is x to power 1. Then in the denominator, the highest degree is x squared. So what does that mean? We say that when this degree is great, is less than this in the denominator, then the asymptote will always be y equal to zero. That is why we have put here y equal to zero. So those are the asymptotes. The next step is to get the intercepts. So intercepts, we say these are the values of x when y is zero and also values of y when x is zero. So when x is zero, come and substitute your x here. You realize that it will, it will be this over zero and any number divided by zero is, is undefined. Therefore, we shall just come here and say that y is undefined. What about when y is equal to 0? So when y is equal to 0, it means that you put here 0. That means that when you cross multiply, the whole of this cancels and this numerator will be equal to 0. So when you equate this one to 0, you'll be able to get the value of x as 3. Therefore, you'll come and conclude that the intercept is 3, 0. Now we shall go to turning points, the next step of turning points. Now for turning points, like I said, you have to differentiate and equate to zero. So we shall come and say that turning points dy dx is equal to zero. Therefore, come and differentiate this. Like I told you, you need the knowledge of quotient formula. How to differentiate a quotient. So differentiate a quotient, we shall look at this denominator and keep it constant, which is here then multiply by derivative of the numerator so when I differentiate this I'll come up with 4 minus keep the numerator constant which is here multiply by derivative of the denominator which is that so when I differentiate this I'll come up with this and this I'll come up with that then everything you divide by the square of the denominator which is that so basically that is quotient formula and to master it more you can go through the video under differentiation one because that video of quotient formula is available on this platform so you have to equate it to zero now next i can cross multiply so meaning that the numerator will be equal to zero now this numerator, when I expand this break, this two, I'll come up with this, and also when I expand this two, I'll come up with this. Now next is to collect like terms, and so we have open brackets. Then I have to collect like terms and try to reduce where necessary. Now this is a quadratic equation, therefore I have to solve it to get the values of x. Now in this case I've used bulldozer method. You can either use bulldozer or factorization any which is simpler for you so when I use bulldozer method I'll come up with these two values so this shows that factorization could not work when you see when you get this most it implies that factorization could not work so the only option was to use bulldozer method so I have to get the corresponding values of y so when x is equal to 6.87 I'll come back here and get the corresponding value of y using this which is 0 0.25 to two decimal places so here we use two decimal places 
what about when x is equal to negative 0.85 come and substitute this in this to come up with the value of 15.75 to two decimal places therefore I can come and code my that my turning points are this and this so we have got the turning points but we have not yet got the nature of the turning points so we have to specify whether it is maximum or minimum Now there are two methods you can either get the second derivative or use sign change but the easiest one is the one for sign change so let's use that one and see and see how to distinguish the nature so first of all you put one value there and and here you put l to mean left hand side and r to mean right hand side then another point is there and here you put l to mean left hand side and here r to mean right hand side so what you are going to do, you'll go back to your expression of dy dx and substituting this in where there is x. But our interest is the sign. So when I substitute, it, so when I substitute a value which is on the left hand side of this, for example, I can use now negative one. So when I substitute negative one, I can I'll look at the sign. The sign will be negative. So our interest is not the magnitude of the value but our interest is the sign on that value you have got after substitution I think you remember that under uh, application of differentiation 1 so a value on the right hand side I can use 0 when I use 0 I'll come up with a sign or a positive sign what about for this one on the left hand side I can use 6 I can use 6 here yeah, 6 to give you a positive and here I can use 7 to give it to give you negative now negative means you go downwards and positive means you go upwards therefore this will be a uh, minimum and here positive means you go upwards negative means you go downwards meaning this will be a maximum so shall come and say that this the, for the nature this will be a minimum point and this will be a maximum point Therefore, we can, can conclude that the minimum turning point is this, and the maximum turning point is that. So, you have finished step 3 of getting the turning point and its nature. Now, we shall go to another step of getting the critical values. Now, critical values, like I told you, these are values of the intercepts and the as vertical and the vertical asymptotes. So, and you arrange them in ascending order so you arrange them in ascending order remember the intercept was 3 0 and the asymptotes were this therefore you arrange in ascending order to give you those values now from there I think you remember from inequality we have to draw we have to tabulate those values so if we have to put there the terms in the expression of y then next we shall come and look for regions a region which is less than that and it will be x less than negative 2 then between this and this it will be x between negative okay so let's first look at the sign change for this one x less than negative 2 so x less than negative 2 we can put there negative 3 so when I put negative 3 here I'll come up with a negative value when I put negative 3 here I'll come up with a negative value put negative 3 here come up with a negative value so the resultant will be negative because when I multiply all these ones I come up with a negative or when I subs when I get these ones remember the expression so now we shall go to between this and this so between those two I can use the value of negative 1 so negative 1 put it here come up with a negative put it here come up with a negative put it here come up with a positive so in the end I come up with a positive the next is from here to between this and this so it will be 0 and 3 so put a, get a value let it let it be 1 so when I put 1 here I'll come up with a negative put 1 here positive put 1 here positive so in the end I'll come up with a negative the next are values greater than that so inequality is that so put let's put 4 when I put 4 here, I'll come up with a positive, put 4 here, positive, put 4 here, positive. So then it will be a positive. Now this table is very vital and we shall see how it important it is. 
so next is now to go the last step of sketching the curve now sketching now here i'm going to make a summary what you're seeing here is a summary of what we have been calculating now this summary i'm using it because i don't need to go through the slides because the these all these ones are in the previous slide now sh tra now transitions from to other slides may be a little wasting time so what i'm going to do what i'm doing here is to summarize what i've so far done because all this will help me to sketch the curve i want but as you are answering the question you don't need this part so as you're answering the question don't write this summary i'm only writing it for the sake of the video so that as i sketch you can easily find realize why i'm doing what i'm going to do so for the required sketch, you shall see that let fx be this expression given. And we shall see why I'm calling it fx towards the end of the sketch. So the, to sketch, you have to first put the horizontal and vertical axis and label them. So this labeling is a must. x-axis and y-axis. The next is to show the asymptotes. So the first one will be the one of x equal to negative 2. Remember this is sketching therefore you don't, you are not accurate. So you are not to scale. x is equal to negative 2. And then another one is y equal to 0. But y equal to 0 is already the horizon, is already the x-axis. That is why I am not showing it there. Now the intercept, insert the intercept is 3, 0, so shall come here and put it there, which is 3, 0. The next are the turning points. Turning points we have this as the minimum and this as the maximum. So shall come and put them there, minimum point and maximum point. Okay, now next is to sketch. Now sketching will require this region. So for this region, we have for x less than or equal to negative 2 so in this part we are seeing this one this negative now negative means it is below the x-axis because negative values are below the x-axis negative values of y are below the x-axis therefore the sketch will be in this form because remember we said the curve never touches the int asymptotes so it never touches this it never touches this unless otherwise so in between these the curve will be in this form because it cannot cross go this side and it can also not cross go this side therefore the only option is to be in that shape therefore shall come and draw it now the, we are putting it down because this is negative if here it was positive then the sketch would be up as up like that hope that is clear that is why we need this table to know whether it is up or down then between negative 2 and 0 this is the region and that region they told us it should be positive then they also told us that this point is a minimum point therefore positive means it is above the x-axis and the minimum point means that it, the curve has to be of that shape therefore shall come and sketch that curve also Okay, then between 0 and 3, 0, this is 0 and this is 3, the curve is negative. But this is an intercept, not that. And also, greater than 3, the curve is positive. So what does that mean? It implies that r the curve, first of all, minimum, sorry, maximum means that it has to be of this shape. But what you should realize is that we only have this intercept. Here we don't have an intercept. Now, because we don't have an intercept and this is a, an asymptote, it implies that when it comes here, of course it will go. But when it comes, reaches here, it doesn't touch this horizontal asymptote. What it does, it just tends towards it. So that is how the sketch should be. So we shall come here and draw it. So you must be keen at this step. It doesn't continue here because the reason why it doesn't continue is because here we don't have an asymptote. And also when you look at this sketch, this region, 
here green line 3 it must be positive but if it comes and crosses here it implies that now it has become negative so it may be confusing but as we do more examples you'll come you'll realize the trick behind this sketch this sketching now i told you to tell you why we use fx because each curve each part of the curve has to be labeled this one has to be labeled this one has to be labeled and this one has to be labeled but remember this function is a bit longer or bigger to write it here because if i'm to write it here it implies that it would go even up to this side that is why i narrow it down by saying let the whole of that function be equal to fx so that when you see y equal to fx and um, this fx implies that so that is the only reason why i'm letting this function to be equal to fx because to make it a little smaller to write so that was question one now let's go to question two question two came from your neighbor 1996 paper one question 14 and says given that a curve is given by this part a determine the turning points of the curve part b determine the equations of the asymptotes of the curve then part c sketch the curve so they want turning points then asymptotes and then lastly the sketch so let's start with the first part of roman one which was the turning points so at turning points you already know that the first derivative is equal to zero Therefore, come and write your expression of y, but you can it's not easier to differentiate when it is in this form. So, we have to expand to get that and expand this to get that. Now, from there, we can easily now differentiate. Now, remember, like I told you, you will need knowledge of quotient formula. Now, quotient formula says, keep this numerator constant, which is there, differentiate, sorry, keep the denominator constant, then differentiate the numerator, which is that then minus keep the numerator constant which is here differentiate the denominator which is that everything divided by the square of the denominator which is that so basically that is quotient formula but you remember to equate it to zero then when i cross multiply it implies that numerator will be now equal to zero I have to expand and simplify so when I expand these two brackets I'll come up with this bracket and when I expand these two brackets I'll come up with this bracket now next is to simplify so when i sim collect like terms for this bracket i'll come up with this bracket and when i collect like terms for this bracket i'll come up with this bracket so next is to collect the entire like terms for entire brackets to come up with this but my aim is to get the values of x so make x the subject and x will be plus or minus three I have to also get the corresponding values of y. So when x is negative 3, y will be equal to negative 4. When x is positive 3, y will be equal to negative a quarter. That means that the turning points are negative 3, negative 4, and 3, negative 0 0.25. But I also have to get the nature of these turning points. So the, like I said, the easier method is the one for sign change. But you can also use second derivative, but second derivative will be a bit hectic. So I advise you to use the sign change. So sign change, it implies that come and write one x value of the turning point here. Here, left means value on the left hand side, arrow means value on the right hand side. Then another turning point is here. This L means the value on the left hand side, value on the right hand side. Now, we, but we, we are interested in the sign change. So when I substitute a value, let's say left hand side can be negative 4 and yet can be now this value should be on the right hand side but not exceeding 3 so I can put there 0 or I can put, okay let me put negative 2 so if I put negative 2, any negative 2 here I put 1, here I put 4 now when I substitute negative 4 in dy dx I'll come up with a, a positive value when I substitute 0 
or negative 2 in dy dx I come up with a negative value. When I substitute 1 in dy dx I come up with a negative value. Substitute 4 in dy dx I come up with a positive value. Therefore, positive means go upwards, negative means go downwards. Negative means go downwards, positive means go upwards. Therefore, this will be maximum and this will be minimum. So let's write that. Therefore, you shall come and say that nature for this one it is maximum and for this it is minimum. Therefore, I can conclude that the minimum turning point is this and the maximum turning point is that. Now, that was Roman 1. What about Roman 2? Roman 2, they wanted the equations of the asymptotes. So if you look at this, the degree are the same. This is the highest degree 2 and this is also degree 2. And like we said, when the degrees are the same, it implies that for horizontal, you get the coefficients of, the, of both the highest degrees. Then for the vertical, it is you just equate the denominator to 0. So here I miss the word tends, so the arrow has to be seen y, as y tends to plus or minus infinity, this denominator will be equal to 0, therefore x equal to negative 1 and x equal to negative 9 are the vertical asymptotes. Then as x tends to plus or minus infinity, y will be equal to 1 over 1 because the quotient here is 1 and the quotient here is 1. That's why you see 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. So what does that mean? It implies that y equal to 1 is the horizontal asymptote. Now we shall go to part 3 of sketching the curve. But for you to sketch, remember we have to go through all the steps. So we need intercepts and we need the region where the curve lies and also need critical values. So let's start with the intercepts. So intercepts, when x equal to 0, y will be equal to 1. And when y is equal to 0, it implies that x is equal to 1 or 9. Therefore, the intercepts will be 0, 1, 1, 0, 9, 0. Now we shall go to the critical values. Now critical values we said, these are the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptotes, but we have to arrange them in ascending order. Then you, next is to tabulate to get the region where the curve lies. So we shall have to first put all the terms which are in the expression of y. So for values less than negative 9, here when I substitute, here I can use negative 10. Now put negative 10 here, I'll come up with a negative, put it here, negative, put it here, negative, put it here, negative. So in the end I'll come up with a positive. Because this one gives positive and this gives positive. I think you remember that under the topic of inequalities. The next is between this and this, so the inequality is that. And the value can be, what can we use? Let's use OK, negative 5. Negative 5, put it here is positive, put it here, negative, put it here, negative, put it here, negative. So in the end you come up with a negative. Now next is between this and this. And the value can be 0. So put 0 here, get that, put 0 here, put 0 here, put 0 here, and the end you come up with positive. The next is between this and this, so the inequality is that and you can use the value 5. If I use 5, put it here, put it here, put it here, put it here, and the end you come up with a negative. The next are values greater than that. So values greater than that, the inequality is that, and by default, like I said, all will be positive. So now we are going to go to the part of sketching. Now what, like I said, on this video, I'll be putting a summary, but when, as you're writing your solutions, you don't need this summary because for you, you can easily peruse through the pages. So that now to sketch your first let fx to be equal to the given function. And like I said, the first step is to draw the axes and label them. So the axes must be labeled x-axis and y-axis. 
then from there we shall put the intercept so we have this zero one which is here one zero which is there and nine zero which is there the next are the turning points we have this one maximum which is there and minimum which is there the next are the asymptotes we have this y equal to one which is here then we have x equal to negative nine which is here and x equal to negative one which is there now next is to use this table so this table for the region less than negative nine y is positive meaning it is above the x-axis what does that mean it means that the curve will be in this form because it shouldn't touch these asymptotes so let's come and draw that curve then between negative 9 and negative 1 it is negative so between in this region it is below the x-axis and the good thing this is the maximum point therefore I can just come and draw something in that shape so let's come and draw it then between negative 1 and 1 negative 1 and 1 from here to here it is positive and now here there is something funny so and also between negative 9 and sorry between positive 1 and 9 it is negative and also between for greater than 9 it is positive now here there is something tricky let's see how it is so this is positive implying and he, this is an intercept meaning that it must pass through that intercept and also this intercept so that is the negative positive I was meaning now negative it is going downwards and the good thing this is a minimum point so it has to go back upwards and because it's an intercept it will come and cross that intercept but remember this is an asymptote so when it reaches here it just tends towards that asymptote but does not touch it so let's draw that curve so that is what they wanted in this question now we shall go to rational functions with factorizable denominator but no turning points now the part you have been doing has been involving you getting the turning points but sometimes the, curve, the rational function will not have a turning point now the question is how do you know that doesn't it does not have a turning point in the question it will be specified they will tell you show that this curve does not have a turning point so that is how you can know otherwise by looking at this curve at the rational function there is no way you can tell that it has or it does not have so in this in such functions these are the steps to take one is to show that there is no turning point so instead of getting turning points you have to show that there is no turning point and two determine the asymptotes vertical and horizontal and three determine the intercepts four list the critical values five determine the region where the curve lies and six sketch the curve so all these ones you already know them the only new part is step one where you have to show that there is no turning point so let's see how such curves such curves are dealt with so question one will come from your neb 2002 paper one question 15 and it says given the curve this roman one show that the curve does not have turning points and to find the equations of the asymptotes then th and hence sketch the curve so note that they have told you to show So at turning points you already know that dy dx is equal to zero so come and get your y and differentiate it using quotient formula. I believe by now you have you have mastered the trick behind quotient formula. So when I differentiate I come up with that and equal to zero. Cross multiply it implies that the numerator is equal to zero. Expand the numerator to come up with that. So these two brackets give you this and these two brackets give you that. Collect like terms, collecting like terms for this gives you that, collecting like terms for this gives you that. Then collect like terms for the entire expression to give you that. Now this quadratic equation can be reduced to give you that. But remember they told us to show that there is no turning point. It implies that no turning point means there are no real roots. 
the for your comments and say that for not turning points the same condition for no real roots which is b squared minus 4ac is less than zero i think to remember that and uh, quadratic and polynomials so b is that a is that and c is that so when i substitute i come up with this left hand side being equal to negative eight and this is zero now negative eight is less than zero which is true and therefore you have shown that there are no turning points so that is how they show Roman 2, they wanted the asymptotes. So asymptotes, as y tends to plus or minus infinity, this denominator is equated to 0 to come up with two values of x, which will be the vertical asymptotes. Also, as x tends to plus or minus infinity, the degree is the same. Therefore, you look at the coefficient for the numerator is 1 and for the denominator is 1. Therefore, y equal to 1 will be the horizontal asymptote. Now next, Roman three for sketching the the hence part for sketching the curve, we need some parts. We need the intercept, critical values, and region where the curve lies. So let's start with the intercepts. When x is equal to zero, y will be equal to zero, and when y is equal to zero, this will be equal to zero. There are four x equal to zero, and o x is equal to three. Therefore, I'll list down the intercepts, and they will be zero zero and three zero. Let's go to the critical values. Critical values. Remember we said you arrange the x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes in ascending order so when i do that i'll come up with these values the next is to tabulate to get the region where the curve lies i believe by now you have mastered how to fill in this table so you have those terms and the lastly y so for values less than zero we shall come up with that inequality and this gives you negative, 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 positive. Then between 0 and 1, that's the inequality and this will be positive, negative, 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 negative. Then between 1 and 3, the inequality is that and that is positive, ne positive, negative, negative, positive. Then between 3 and 4, inequality is that and that is positive 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 negative negative then greater than this by default the inequality is that and by default all are positive so when that is done the next step is to sketch but for sketching like i told you for me i need the summary but for you you don't need to write the summary Now next is to sketch, we shall let fx be equal to the given expression and after that we shall draw the horizontal and vertical axes and label them. The next is to show the intercepts, this one is already known the origin and this one is here. Then the asymptote y equal to 1 is there, then x equal to 1 is there and x equal to 4 is here. Then, now sketching this region is positive, so it will be in that form, positive and negative. So, positive from here, going this side is positive, that's why you see it above, then this side it will be below, the x-axis, this, yeah. So, we have done with this, then for this one, 1, 2, 3, it is, 1, 2, 3 is positive, so it will be in this form, then 3, 2, 3 to 4 is negative, so it will be in that form. So let's sketch that. Then we are done with these two. Then lastly, this one greater than, greater than 4, it is positive. So it will be in that form. And that is what they wanted. Then question 2 says, show that the curve this has no turning points. Then sketch the curve, give the equations of the asymptotes. 
so like we said the turning point the y dx is equal to zero so come and get the value of y then differentiate it using quotient formula and equate it to zero then cross multiply to get the numerator equal to zero then open brackets for this is that and for this is that then collect like terms for the entire expression and try to reduce to get a quadratic equation then remember the condition that for no turning points b squared minus 4ac is less than 0 comma substitute for b substitute for a which is 1 here substitute for c which is 2 then negative 4 is less than 0 which is true and hence we have shown then next is the Asymptote. So as y tends to plus or minus infinity, the denominator is equal to zero. Therefore, x equal to negative two and x equal to zero are vertical asymptotes. As x tends to plus or minus infinity, y is equal to zero because this highest degree is less than this, the one in the denominator. The next is to sketch. So to sketch, you need the intercepts. So intercepts when x is zero, y is undefined. And when y is 0, this is equal to 0, therefore x is equal to negative 1. Therefore, the intercept will be negative 1, 0. Now, the critical values in ascending order are those ones, then we, have, we shall tabulate to come up with those expressions. Then, for the region less than negative 2, the inequality is that, and the signs are that. Then for the region between negative 2 and negative 1, the inequality is that, and the signs are that, negative, negative, positive, negative, sorry, positive. Then between this and this, the inequality is that, and the signs are that, negative, positive, positive, negative. Then greater than this, the inequality is that, and by default, all are positive. So now we shall go to sketch, but we need a summary, like I told you. For you don't need this summary, but for me, I need the summary. So now shall sketch, draw the x-axis and label it, draw the y-axis and also label it. Then next show this intercept here, then show this vertical asymptote here, now the here, these ones are, this x equal to 0 is this y axis and this y equal to 0 is the x axis, therefore these axes are also asymptotes, therefore for this one x less than negative 2 it is negative, that is why it is this side, then between negative 2 and negative 1, it is positive which means that it will be in that form then between negative 1 and 0 it is negative meaning it will be in this form so let's come and draw that then greater than 0 it is positive meaning it will be in that form because those two are asymptotes so basically that is what they wanted so now we shall go to the other type of rational functions and these are the ones with the factorizable denominator and slanting asymptotes. We are see what we are talking more about the slanting asymptote in the next sl slide. But these are the steps which need to be taken. One is that they d determine the asymptote that is vertical and slanting asymptote. Then step two, determine the turning points and their nature. Step three, intercept, step four critical values, step 5, region, and step 6, curve. So, all these ones you are conversant with them, the only part you are not conversant with is the step 1 where you have to get the slanting asymptote. Now, for you to know that it is a slanting asymptote, look at the highest degree in the numerator and that one in the denominator. Like I told you, if the one in the denominator is greater than that in the denominator, it implies that it has a slanting asymptote. So what is a slanting asymptote? Slanting asymptotes are neither vertical nor horizontal. 
but are slanting at a certain angle to the x axis. Such asymptotes are represented by dotted lines just like horizontal and vertical asymptotes were. And these lines are in the form y equal to mx plus c. I think remember that this is the general equation of a line where c is a constant and m is the gradient of the line. A slanting asymptote, other, peop, other books, depending on the book we are using, they can call it a diagonal asymptote or oblique asymptote or inclined asymptote. Any is the, the same. So for this video, we shall stick to the word slanting asymptote. Now, a slanting asymptote occurs when the highest degree, this one we've already talked about it, in the numerator is greater than that in the denominator by 1. Now, to obtain a slanting asymptote, synthetic or long division is first worked out and the quotient of the division is the slanting asymptote. So, basically, this is how you can get the slanting asymptote. You have to do long division or synthetic division. Note that if a curve intercepts or cuts a slanting asymptote, then the asymptote will be referred to as a weak asymptote. So with that knowledge, let's go through these questions. Question 1, which came from UNEB 2003, paper 1, question 13, and says, Determine the nature of the turning points of the curve, this. Then sketch the graph of the curve. Now in this, unlike in the, in the previous case, here they will not tell you that the curve has a slanting asymptote. It is you to realize how. Look at this degree. The degree is 2 and this degree is 1. Therefore, with that, you just know that it has a slanting asymptote. So let's start with our steps. One turning points. At turning points, divide dx is equal to 0. So get the y and differentiate it using quotient formula and then equate to 0. Cross multiply to equate the numerator to 0. Open brackets for this to give you this and for this to give you that. Simplify further, simplify the entire expression to come up with that. Reduce to get a quadratic equation to come up with that. Then solve it by either bulldozer or factorization. So here I've used factorization and therefore x will be 2 or x equal to negative 1. Now when x is equal to, is equal to 2, y will be equal to negative 1. And when x is equal to negative 1, y will be equal to negative 4. Therefore, come and conclude that the turning points are that and that. But I also need to know their nature. So nature, like I told you in this case, it is easier if you use the method of sun change. So put one point there and put another point there. I believe by now you know what R and L means. So for the sun change, here it will be positive, here it will be negative, here it will be negative, here it will be positive. That means that the nature here to be a maximum and here to be a minimum. Therefore, we conclude that the minimum turning point is this and the maximum turning point is that. Now, let's go to the asymptotes. For asymptotes, I, like I told you, whenever there is a slanting asymptote, you have to first do long division for you to get that slanting asymptotes. So, I'm going to divide the expression. Now, long division, you look at the highest degrees. So, this divide by this, what do you get? You get a half. You get a half x, so 0.5x, which is there. Now, after that, you will say this one multiplied by the whole of this to come up with this. Then, these two, you are going to subtract them. When I subtract, I'll come up with that. Now, this one divide by this, you come up with negative 2.75. Then negative 2.75 multiplied by the whole of this, you'll come up with that. Then these two, when I subtract them, I'll come up with that. So there you stop because here, this, this one is a constant, this one has a degree 1. Now, like I said, this quotient is what we call the slanting asymptote. So, shall come here and conclude that 
y equal to 0.5x plus 2.75 is a slanting asymptote. But to draw the such a line, you need two points. So I'll get two points, and those will be the intercepts. When x is 0, y will be negative 2.75, and when y is 0, x will be 5.5. Then that was the standing asymptote. What about the vertical asymptote? For vertical asymptote, as y tends to plus or minus infinity, this the denominator will be equal to zero. Therefore, x equal to zero point five is the vertical asymptote. Then now shall go to the intercepts. Intercepts that is the equation we have. So when x is equal to zero, y will be that, and when y is equal to zero, the whole of this will be equal to zero. Therefore, x is equal to 1 and 5. Therefore, the intercepts will be 0, negative 5, 1, 0, 5, 0. Then critical values are those ones in ascending order. Therefore, we shall tabulate. I believe by now you know how to tabulate. So, first put the terms, then start with this for this less than that, the inequality is that, and the sign is negative, 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 negative. Then between this and this, the inequality is that, and the sign will be negative, negative, positive, positive. Then between this and this, the inequality is that, and the sign will be positive, negative, positive, negative. Then greater than this, the inequality is that, and the sign will by default they are all positive. So now I shall go to the summary. Like I told you, for me I need the summary, but for you don't need the summary. Then for the required sketch, you shall first let fx be equal to the given expression. Then I'll come and draw the axes, horizontal and vertical, but and label them. The next is to put these values. One is the asymptote x equal to a half, which is that. Then this one, you need to plot these two values. This one is here. And this one is there. So a line through them is this asymptote. Then now there is the intercepts. This one is here, this one is here, and this one is there. Then the turning points, this one is here, and this one is here. Then now we shall draw now. For this one, less than a half is negative. So the whole of this will be negative. It doesn't touch that asymptote, so it will just go downwards. Then now here, between a half and one, it is positive, so it comes like that, positive, above the x-axis. Then one and five is negative, so negative to be the whole of this, this is the minimum point, up to there. Then greater than five is positive, so it will go above the x-axis. So let's do that, and label it. So basically that is what they wanted. So now we shall go to question 2, which came from UNEB, November 1998, paper 1, question 13, and says, Sketch the curve, this, for x greater than 0, showing any asymptotes. Then, find the area enclosed by the x-axis, the line x equal to 4, and the curve, this. Then, if this area is now rotated about the x-axis through 360 degrees, Determine the volume of the solid, gener solid generated, correct to three significant figures. So let's start with the asymptotes. So for asymptotes, because of this one, it implies this is the slanting asymptote. Then for the vertical, as y tends to plus or minus infinity, this one is equal to zero, as you can see it here. Therefore, x equal to 0 is the vertical asymptote. Then for the intercepts, 
given that curve when x is equal to 0 y is undefined and also when y is equal to 0 x is equal to 2 therefore the intercept is to 0 now we shall go to the turning points so at turning points the y dx is equal to 0 so get your y, your y this one from indices it can become 8.8x to power negative 2 therefore when I differentiate I come up with this equal to 0 you come up with that my aim is to make x the subject so x will be equal to negative 2.52 when x is this y will be that therefore the turning point is that but I also need to get the nature so I'll come and use the method of sign change so sign change put this this value here then the sign will be this will give me positive this will give me negative therefore the nature will be a maximum now oh, next is critical values critical values uh, these ones in ascending order therefore the table will be in that form so first our values less than this which is there's an inequality and yet will be negative positive therefore this will be negative then between this and this the inequality is that and yet will be negative positive and this will be negative then greater than this is the inequality is that and by default all are positive So next is the summary of what you have so far done and I'll use this summary to make this required sketch. So let fx be equal to that, therefore come and draw the x axis horizontal and vertical then label them. Then next is to demarcate the surrounding aspect as this so it passes through the origin. x equal to 0 is the y axis. Then turning point we have this one so come and put it there. So first of all the intercept is this and the turning point will be that. Then now for the region less, less than x less than 0 the whole of this is negative. Therefore, this is the maximum point, so it will be in this form. It doesn't touch the vertical axis. Then, between 0 and 2, 0 and 2, it is negative, and x greater than 2, it is positive, meaning that 0 and 2, it is negative, meaning it is in this form. Then, this one is positive, so it will go upwards. Let's draw that. So basically that is what they wanted, but they also told us to get the area and the volume generated. So we shall use that strip to get the required area. So let's do that in the next slide. So element of area is y small j in x. Therefore total area is from 2 to 4 of y dy dx. Now y is that. So when I integrate this, I'll come up with this. Substitute the limits, I'll come up with that. Simplify and use the calculator, I'll come up with 10 square units as the area. What about volume? Element of volume is pi y squared delta x. I think you remember this under the topic of integration 1. And the good thing is also available on this platform. So come up there for total volume, so this should be volume, not area. So total volume is equal to this. We substitute for y, then inter expand this to come up with this our expanding integrate to come up with that then substitute the limits and lastly use a calculator to come up with the required area to three significant figures now we shall go to rational functions which cannot lie in a certain range so sometimes they'll tell you that a given curve does not lie in a certain range so these are the steps you to, to follow one determine the range of values of y for real x then two determine the turning points and their nature three determine their symptoms four determine the intercepts and five 
sketch the curve now these other steps are familiar but this one is the one which is unique and for this type of function so let's see how such questions are done so question one says question one came from your name 1992 paper one question 10 question 10 and says a curve is given by this roman one show that for real values of x y can y cannot take on values in the interval this then roman two determine the turning points of the curve and roman three start with reasons the asymptotes of the curve and roman four sketch the curve so first of all we shall write the given curve equal the given expression expand the denominator to come up with that now the difference with this type of approach or with this type of solution from the previous one is that here we cross multiply so each time they ask for values of y for real x the first thing to do is to cross multiply then expand then take everything on one side and collect like terms so x squared the quotient is that x there is this and this so to come up with this our without x then we have this now this one is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c therefore for real x we know that b squared mi minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0 so come and substitute this is this b is here then a is here then c is there So that gives you that when I simplify and I'll come up with this. Because y minus 1 is common in both terms, so pull it out. Here I remain with y minus 1 and here I remain with 8y. Simplify, this gives you 9y minus 1. Now this is an inequality, so to solve it you have to get critical values and also tabulate like we did under the topic of inequalities. So critical values are those ones, then tabulating now shall start with these are the terms there's this and there's also this then the entire expression which is that then for y less than this that is the inequality and the sign will be negative this will be negative so in the end we come up with a positive between this and this the inequality is that and here the sign will be negative positive negative then greater than this the sign inequality is that therefore this will be positive by default or will be positive now when you look at this inequality greater than zero means that they are positive therefore the unwanted part is one which is negative therefore y cannot lie in this interval which is this so basically that is what they wanted in this roman so the asymptotes let's first start with the turning point so from this expression where the curve doesn't lie remember if you draw these two lines, this is y equal to 1 and that y equal to 1 over 9. If it doesn't lie there, it implies that this will be the maximum because it can't exceed this. And this will be the minimum because it can't exceed that. Sorry, this will be the minimum and this will be the maximum. Therefore, at this point, there is a local maxima is the maximum point, And at this point, there will be a minimum point. That is where this word comes from, local maximum and local minimum. Then rem I think remember this e expression, you already got it from the quadratic expression in x. Therefore, come and substitute when y is equal to 1 over 9, where there is y put 1 over 9 to come up with that. Multiply throughout, reduce the quadratic ex expression to come up with this, then solve it. When I solve it, this one will give me this because it has repeated roots. Then when y is equal to 1, come and substitute here, here, and here to come up with this. So this will also have a repeated root which is x equal to 0. Therefore, the maximum turning point is this and the minimum turning point is that. Now here we don't need to again to differentiate as long as they first tell you to find the region range where the curve does not lie, you don't need to go through the steps of differentiating you just look for this and state the maximum and minimum then you can 
get the coordinates then now they also wanted you to get their symptoms so as y tends to plus minus infinity this denominator is equal to zero therefore x equal to half and x equal to negative one are the vertical asymptotes then as x tends to plus or minus infinity y is equal to zero because this highest degree here is smaller than the highest degree in the denominator they also told us to get the reason so the reason should I just say that the curve approaches the lines x equal to negative 1 and x equal to a half as y becomes larger and larger or smaller and smaller. Therefore, this and this are the vertical asymptotes. What about for the horizontal asymptotes? We shall say the curve approaches the line y equal to 0 as x becomes larger and larger or smaller and smaller. Therefore, y equal to 0 is the horizontal asymptote. Then they also want us to sketch the curve. To sketch, you need the intercepts. So intercepts still from this equation, you can get the intercepts. So when x equal to zero, y is that, and when y is equal to zero, x is that. Therefore, the intercepts are zero, one, and one, zero. Now this summary, like I told you, it is me who needs it. For you, you may not need to write it. Now here when they talk about range where the uh, after showing that the curve does not lie in a certain range there's no need to get the range where the curve lies because you already know where it doesn't lie. So the required sketch let fx be equal to that therefore come and draw the axis. Then show this range where it doesn't lie by those lines so this is y equal to 1 over 9 and this is y equal to 1. So the curve does not lie in this region. It can lie above and also below, but not in this region. Therefore, the asymptotes, we have this one. We also have this one. And y is equal to 0. y equal to 0, which is the x-axis. The next are the turn, are the, we have the intercepts. So there is this one which is z which is 1 0 and also 0 1 which is here then there are turning points this one is also a, max a turning point and there is another turning point is there which is this so they remember this is an asymptote this is also an asymptote so it will be in that form we cannot put it up here because it doesn't lie in this range so there's no way it can go there that is why it goes down then here this is the max a minimum so it does go that side so that's how it will be then here it will be in that form because it cannot go in this form because it doesn't lie in this range and basically that's what they wanted then now shall go to question 2 which says that given that this Show that for real values of x, y cannot lie between negative 2 and 6. Then Roman 2, find the turning points. Roman 3, state the asymptotes of the curve. And Roman 4, sketch the curve. So first of all, you should realize that this one has slanting asymptote because this degree is higher than the one in the denominator. So for this, the first thing to do is to cross multiply, then rearrange and get a quadratic in x. Then for real x, b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0. So I'll substitute for b and c, expand and factorize to come up with that. Then tabulate your values. We have this, we have this, and we have the product. Then the sign change. For this one, we have this, this, and that. Then for this one, we have that, that, and that. And by default, those are all positive. Therefore, the curve does not lie in the range this. Roman 2 from this, it implies that this y equal to 2 is the local maximum and y equal to 6 is the local minima. 
why because if you have this one and this will be 6 and this will be negative 2 it implies the curve does not lie between these so here it will be a minimum and here it will be a maximum therefore from this equation which is this substitute when x go, when y is negative 2 x will be negative 1 and when y is equal to 6 x will be 3 Therefore, maximum turning point is this, and minimum turning point is that. Now, next will be the asymptotes. Now, for the asymptotes, we have to do some long divisions. So, because it was the numerator had the highest, higher degree than the the one on the denominator, therefore, we shall first do some long division to get the slanting asymptote. So, when I divide this by this, I'll come up with x, which is there. Then apply this x through this to come up with that. Then subtract this 2. And when I subtract the 2, I'll come up with that. Then still this x divided by this x, I'll come up with positive 1, which is that. Then this positive 1 times this gives you this. And subtract this 2, you'll come up with that. Therefore, I shall stop here, there and say that. The slanting asymptote is y equal to x plus 1, which is this. So as y tends to plus minus infinity, x minus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, x equal to 1 is a vertical asymptote. The from and for the one day the intercepts. So we shall first get the intercepts from this curve equation. When x is equal to 0, y will be equal to negative 3. And when y is equal to 0, x is undefined. Therefore, the intercepts are 0, negative 3. So, like I said, this summary it is me who needs it, so for you, you don't need to write it. So, let fx be equal to that. We shall first draw the axes, label them. Then show the region where the curve does not lie. There's y equal to negative 2 and y equal to 6. So the curve does not lie in that range. Then you have these asymptotes. x equal to 1 and this one which is y equal to x plus 1. Then you have the intercept 0, negative 3 which is there. Then you have the min turning points. There is this one which is here and this which is there. So because it doesn't lie in this range, it implies that here, this this one will be in this form, and this one will be in that form. So let's come and draw them. And basically that's what they wanted. So now shall go to rational functions whose denominator cannot be factorized. So if the curve is in the form this and gx cannot be factorized, the following steps are taken. 1. Determine the turning points and their nature. 2. Determine the asymptotes. 3. Determine the intercepts and sketch the curve. So in this case, we don't need the critical values and we don't need the region where the curve lies. So question 1 came from UNEB 2013, paper 1, question 3, 13 and says, A curve has the equation this, part A. Determine the nature of the turning points of the curve. Then part B, find the equation of the asymptote. And part, and hence, sketch the curve. So in this case, this denominator cannot be factorized. So this one can be written as this. Then a turning point, the y dx is equal to 0, so come and differentiate and equal to 0. Simplify, cross multiply, therefore x will be equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2, therefore turning point is 0, 2. You also have to get the nature of the turning point. So put 0 there, LR, sign change, this will be positive, this will be negative, therefore the nature is maximum. 
then for part b we have that equation curve therefore as y tends to plus or minus infinity this one is equal to zero and implies that x is undefined has no vertical asymptote then as x tends to plus or minus infinity y is equal to zero for the hence part intercepts when x is zero y is two and when y is zero x is undefined therefore the intercept is that one which is the same as the turning point so shall I go to the now the required sketch summary we need that so first we need to draw the axis vertical axis and horizontal axis and label them then you have this asymptote y equal to zero which is the x-axis then intercept is zero two but it's also the turning point therefore it will be here but that turning point is a maximum meaning that it will be in this shape but remember it doesn't have inters it doesn't okay it has this other intercept but doesn't have any x intercept therefore it will just be in that form so let's do the sketch so basically that is what they wanted question 2 came from your neighbor 1990 paper 1 question 5 and says determine the stationary points of the curve this and sketch the curve stationary points are the same as turning points so at stationary points divide dx equal to 0 differentiate it to come up with that using quotient formula equal to 0 then cross multiply simplify you'll be able to get the values of x as plus or min minus 1 so when x is negative 1 y is negative 0 0.5 and when x is 1 y is 0 0.5 therefore the stationary points are these ones but you also need to get the nature so let's use the method of sign change So one point will be here, another point will be here, and when it comes to sign change, this will be negative, positive, positive, negative. Therefore, when it comes to the nature, we shall get this as the minimum, and this will be maximum. Therefore, minimum stationary point is this, and maximum stationary point is that. Then for the asymptotes, as y tends to plus or minus infinity, this denominator is equal to zero. X is undefined, therefore no vertical asymptote. As x tends to plus or minus infinity, y equal to zero is the horizontal asymptote. Intercepts when x is equal to zero, y is zero. When y is zero, x is zero. Therefore the intercept is zero, zero. So this summary is mine, but for you don't need to write it. So now let's go to the sketch. First we need the horizontal and vertical axis and we'll label it. Then we shall put the, the intercept, the, the intercept 0, 0 which is already known. Now the turning points, we have this and also this. I know that this is a minimum, so in that shape, and this is the maximum in that shape. And we have an asymptote at the x-axis, so it will be in that form. Come here, cross this, like this. Also go here, but don't touch there. So basically, that is what they wanted. So let's draw that curve. And also label the curve. So now shall go to sketching reciprocal curves. So for a pair of reciprocal curves, the following should be noted. One the vertical asymptotes of one curve are the x-intercepts of the other so when you get the vertical asymptotes of one curve you don't need to get the x-intercepts because they will be the same then the x-intercepts of one curve are the vertical asymptotes of the other so when you get the x-intercepts of one curve you don't need to get the vertical asymptotes of the other because they will be the same y-intercepts and turning points for each curve are determined independently so y-intercepts and the turning points they have no relationship so you get them independently 
Then the horizontal asymptote of one curve is the reciprocal of the value of the horizontal asymptote of the other. Therefore, if the horizontal asymptote of one curve is y equal to a, the horizontal asymptote of the other will be y equal to 1 over a. However, if the horizontal asymptote of one curve is 0, this is a special case, when the horizontal asymptote is 0, getting the reciprocal will be infinite because 1 over 0 is infinite. Therefore, it implies that the other curve will not have a horizontal asymptote. And in this case, one has to check whether the curve has a slanting asymptote. So with that, let's go through these questions. One came from your neighbor 2008, paper 1, question 14, and says, On the same axis, sketch the curves this and this, and show the asymptotes and turning points. So there are two curves. Let's first consider the curve of fx alone. So fx is that, but when I expand it, I come up with this. Therefore, at turning points, the y dx is equal to 0. So therefore, when I differentiate this, I'll come up with this and equal to 0. Therefore, the values of x will be x equal to 0 and x equal to negative 4 over 3. So when x is equal to 0, y will also be equal to 0. And when x is equal to negative 4 over 3, y will be equal to 32 over 27. Therefore, the turning points are 0, 0 and negative 4 over 3, 32 over 27. But we also need to get their nature, so we shall use the method of sun change. So put one point there, another point there. Then sign change, this will give you positive, this will give you negative, this will give you negative, this will give you positive. Therefore, the nature for the first one will be a maximum, and for the next one will be a minimum. So we can conclude that the minimum planning point, turning point is this, and maximum turning point is that. Now we shall go to the intercepts. So when x is equal to 0, y is 0. When y is 0, x is that. Therefore, x is equal to 0 or negative 2. Therefore, the intercepts are 0, 0 and negative 2, 0. By comparison, remember we said, by comparison, if you have the vertical asymptote of one curve, we don't need the vertical x-intercept for the other. And if you have the x-intercept for one curve, we don't need the vertical asymptote for the other. So, let's start with curve y. What you have so far got, you have got the x-intercepts, which are those ones. And the, this, this one doesn't have the vertical asymptotes. Because it is linear, it is, sorry, polynomial. Then also, it doesn't have horizontal asymptotes. What does that mean for curve GX? For curve GX, this x-intercept here will give you this vertical asymptote. And this x-intercept will give you this vertical asymptote. Then this one, because there are no vertical asymptotes, it implies that there are no x-intercepts. Then no horizontal asymptote implies that here the horizontal asymptote is y equal to 0. Think remember that we said for special case when y equal to 0 for y is the horizontal asymptote for one curve, then the other will not have a horizontal asymptote. So what we are left with is the y intercept and the turning points, if any. So for gx, we have that. There are four turning points, dy dx is equal to 0, differentiate it, you will come up with that equal to 0, simplify. Then cross multiply, factorize, and get the values of x. Then when x is 0, y is undefined. And when x is equal to that, y will be equal to 27 over 32. Therefore, the turning point is this. We also need its nature by using the method of sign change. So we shall put to that value and... For the sign change, this will be negative and this will be positive, and that implies that the nature will be a minimum. We also need the y intercept. So, from this one, the y intercept to so we shall say that when x is 0, y is undefined, therefore, there is no y intercept. 
So the critical values in ascending order, one will be negative 2, another one will be 0. Then you shall tabulate to get the region where the curve lies. So those are the terms. For less than that, in quite is that, and the sign will be this, that, and that. Then between this and this, the inequality is that, and the sign will be positive, positive, positive. Then greater than that, the inequality sign is that, and by default, all are positive. So now we shall go to the required sketch. For the required sketch, we need the x axis and the y axis were labeled. Then here we need here we shall search we shall sketch curve by curve. Let's start with the curve fx. So for curve x fx we have these intercepts 0, 0 and negative 2, 0. So 0, 0 is already the origin and negative 2, 0 is this. Then next there are no vertical asymptotes, no horizontal asymptotes, but the y intercept is 0, 0, which we already know. Now let's go to the turning point 0, 0 and which we already know is the origin and maximum which is that. The next is to sketch. Now sketching, first of all, this one is the minimum and this one is the maximum. Therefore the curve will be in this form. So it will be in that form and that form. Therefore go this side, come here, then cross like that. So let's just sketch that curve. label it. So for curve gx we have x equal to 0 and x equal to negative 2. So shall come and put that asymptote there. x equal to negative 2. x equal to 0 is the y axis. No x intercept. Horizontal asymptote is y equal to 0 which is the x axis. No y intercept. Turning point is negative 4 over 3, 27 over 32. So you come and put the turning point there. And that turning point is a maximum. Therefore, if you are to sketch, first of all, this is an asymptote and this is an asymptote. Therefore, the curve here will be in this form. Therefore, you come and draw our curve in that form. Then, in between here, this is the maximum. Sorry, minimum, though, so it will be in that form. So you come and draw it also there and label it. And lastly, it will be in this case, which is that, because it was positive also above the x-axis. And this was an asymptote, this was also an asymptote. So now shall go to question 2 which came from UNEB 1995 paper 1 question 6 and says show that fx equal to this has no turning points. Then sketch the curve this. Then if gx is equal to the reciprocal of fx, sketch the graph y equal to gx on the, on the axis. Then show the asymptotes and where fx and gx intersect. So considering curve fx, why is that? The tool has shown that it has no turning points. So let's first say a turning point divided dx equal to 0. So differentiate using quotient formula and equate to 0. Cross multiply to equal the numerator to 0. Then open brackets for this two brackets will be that and these two brackets will be this. Then reducing this bracket is that and reducing this bracket is that. Then for the whole expression, you shall come up with that. Therefore, for no turning points, b squared minus 4ac is, is less than 0. So you shall come and substitute for b, a, and c, simplify, and this is less than 0, it is true, therefore it is shown. Then the asymptotes, remember we are still on curve fx, this is y, therefore as y tends to plus or minus infinity, this one tends equals to 0. Therefore, x equal to 3 and x equal to negative 2 is the, are the vertical asymptotes. 
as x tends to plus minus infinity these are the same degree so the quotients are also all one one that's why you see a one over one which is equal to one therefore y equal to one is the horizontal asymptote now the intercepts when x is zero y is zero when y is zero x is that therefore x is either zero or five that means that the intercepts are 0, 0 and 5, 0. Now we shall go to the critical values, arrange them in ascending order and then tabulate to get the region where the curve lies. So the terms are those ones. So we shall begin with values less than this, the inequality is that, therefore this gives you negative, 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 negative. In the end we get positive. Then between this and this, the inequality is that, and this gives you positive, negative, 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 negative. Then between this and this, the inequality is that, and this gives you positive, positive, negative, negative, positive. Between this and this, the inequality is that, and this gives you positive, 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 negative, negative. Then greater than that, the inequality is that, and this gives you positive, 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 positive. So by comparison, like we did in the first question, there are some, if you know some values for the fx, we don't need to get the values for gx, we just use comparison. So for fx, we know the inter x intercept, vertical asymptote, and also the horizontal asymptote. Therefore, by comparison, when you come to GX, the X intercept here will become the vertical asymptote there. So here we have 0, X equal to 0. Here we have 5, X equal to 5. Then here we have vertical asymptotes. These ones, therefore, they will become the X intercepts. So here we have negative 2, which is there, 3, which is there. Then here we have horizontal asymptote. These, the, the reciprocal also remain 1. That's why we have horizontal asymptote 1 here. Therefore, for GX, now we need the Y intercept and also the turning points. So, Y intercept, we shall say that when X is 0, Y is undefined, therefore, no Y intercept. Now, the points of intersection, now the turning points, we have not got them because remember in FX, they said they we prove that the curve does not have a turning point therefore that implies that even in this one in gx the curve will not have a turning point that is why we have ignored this part of turning points and we only dealt with intercepts now we shall go to the point of intersection because in the question they told us to show the points of intersection so the point of intersection fx is equal to gx so come and substitute for fx and gx then cross multiply you shall come up with this now here you don't just put square root, you just take everything on one side and this becomes difference of two squares so we shall come up with two brackets, one for difference, another one for sum. Collect the terms for each bracket, this one gives you this and this one gives you that. So in the end you shall come up with that. Therefore for this one equal to zero, we have x equal to 3 over 2. What about this one? This one is a quadratic. Therefore, we either use factorization or bulldozer method. So for that equal to 0, I can use bulldozer method to come up with the values of x as this and that. So when x is equal to 1.5, which we got in the previous slide, y will be equal to 1. And when x is equal to 3.79, y will be equal to negative 1.00. To two decimal places, then when x is equal to negative 0 0.79, y will be equal to negative 1.00 to two decimal places. Therefore, the point of points of intersection are this, this, and that. So now we can easily draw our make our sketch. One, f let's start with curve by curve. So let's start with fx. fx we have intercepts. 0, 0, and 5, 0. So let's come here, draw the axes, label them, x-axis and y-axis, then show the intercepts, 5, 0, and 0, 0, which is the origin. So this is 5, 0. 
Then go to the vertical asymptotes x equal to negative 2 and x equal to 3. So that is x equal to negative 2, then x equal to 3. Then horizontal asymptote to y equal to 1. Then intercept to 0, 0, which is already known, so we can come and sketch our curve. So that is the first branch, then next is that, and next will be that. Then now we shall go to gx. gx vertical symptoms are x equal to 0 and x equal to 5. So x equal to 0, which is this y axis, and x equal to 5, which is there. Then x intercepts are these ones negative 2, 0, and 3, 0. So this is negative 2, 0, and this is 3, 0. Y, inter as y asymptote is the a y equal to 1, which, is which I have already got. Then y intercept is no. There's no y intercept, though, and these are the intersections. So let's first sketch the curve for gx. So for this branch, it will be that. And for this, it will be in this form. Now it has to be opposite. If this is here, this will be in this shape. And if this one was in this shape, this will be in this shape. That's why you see the shape in, the, in that form. Then this one was in this shape, implying that this will be in that shape. So they should be just opposite. Now the points of intersection, there is this one, point A, which is that. There is also this one, point B, which is that. And there's also this one point C which is that and basically that's what they wanted so that brings us to the end of this video thank for watching and be reminded the next videos will be on algebra so if you have not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded and also if you know any student who's not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so you can all benefit as a family